Hi right, folks, how you doing? It's Des K's. And in this video, what I want to do, we're going to try and go through a step-by-step -step, um, video on how to make a simple birch bark container or a birch bark pot. All right, so uh, stay tuned for another exciting video. Right, so even though this is a crafting session, you're going to be using cutting tools and such like and all the rest of it. Obviously, the first thing you need to you need to have in your possession somewhere is a first aid kit or a roll of uh, tape, just in case the inevitable happens and you end up cutting your finger or such like. Right, so let's just give you a quick uh, sort of uh, a, a talk of the tools that I've got. Right, as you can see, obviously a load of um, load of tool on the table. Okay, so if I just go through it all, and then um, obviously you'll see me using the bits as we go. Right, so in this bag here, I've got, um, this is normally all my carving stuff that I take away with me on the weekend. But what I'm going to be using out of there is a bit of abronite, and that'll come into process when you see me when I actually start rubbing down the birch bark. Okay, next to that I've got a metal ruler. Okay, um, a pencil for just doing your marking out if necessary. Okay, I've got a little carving knife there. This is a little TN12 by Flex Cut, and I like to use that as well. Okay, I've also got a, a bigger knife. It doesn't really matter too much. This is just like a more a training knife. This is one that um, this is one of Ray Mears type ones that came out. All right, um, pair of scissors. Okay, the main um, product down below is the birch bark. Um, I've got a couple of dowels here, and uh, I've been using them on the lid. Um, if I use, if I quickly just show you the lid now, okay, what I've done was I actually drilled out a hole which is in that box there. There's some drills in there. I've used a six mil drill bit, but it doesn't really matter. I've also got some garden twine. All right, and then what I use with that, I shaped up the dowel, okay, to actually be pushed inside the actual lid. And then that holds it there, that holds it tight. And then I've got a little bit sticking out the top there, okay. All right, so we've got a couple of dowels. Um, what I have, what I have made first of all is just the disc that goes on the bottom. Okay, I have a little piece of wood there, seasoned birch, I think it is. All right, I've got a roller cutter. All right, this is basically the circular blade um, kind of uh, of cutting tool. I mean, you can use your knife, but you'll get a nicer sort of straighter cut using one of these. I personally find. Um, you've got a hole punch if you wish to use that. Okay, for when you're doing the bits of sewing. I've got an awl as well, okay, which I'm using on the side of the knife. All right, a little awl for puncturing holes into the uh, into the um, bark. I've got some needles there. Now, the needles that I use really are just um, one with a real big eye on it that will accommodate the raffia. All right, the raffia is what I'm going to use to, be, to, to, to do the sewing. Okay, if you look at this one, you'll see the, uh, the, the, the the sewing that I've done just to make it look a little bit nicer once it was all back together. All right, I've also got some glue. All right, the glue is for the um, base, just for sticking the base in. All right, and then uh, the one other tool that I've got, oh no, I've got it here. And the other tool that I've got is a just a normal hand uh, hand drill. But it doesn't matter. You can use an electric drill, cordless drill, whatever. At the end of the day, just to drill your hole into your uh, into your handle, just to put the uh, obviously just to accommodate the the cordage or whatever it is you're using, a piece of leather or whatever, a piece of wood makes no difference. Totally up to you. All right. Um, and then finally, I've got uh, just a little stump here just to do all my drilling on, okay? Because the last thing I do is want to upset Mrs. C and for her to come home from, wo uh, from work and to see that the, the table has been, um, been turned into a tea bag, all right? So there's some of the tools that, um, that I use during this process. And obviously the final one is not forgetting your first aid kit. That's, uh, that's probably the first thing I grabbed, okay? Right, so I've got uh, my piece of birch bark, okay. I've already cut the section out that I want, okay. 
made it as straight as I possibly can. I've done nothing else to it at this point other than removing it off the sheet. All right, as you can see there, that sheet's got a big hole in it. The other one that's out of the picture has got a big hole in it as well. There's loads of splits in it and everything else, but you're governed by obviously the size of the pot, container, whatever it is that you're going to make. And so the one that I'm going to make is not dissimilar to this one. Okay, probably a, maybe probably a bit, a bit longer, but it will be of kind of the same sort of diameter that's gonna that's gonna accommodate that disc. All right, now once you've cut it to size, it hasn't got to be totally spot on. Now there are ways where you can actually cut bits out of it where it all sits inside and everything else, but I just think that's too fiddly. And if you're doing it while you're at home, I think the way that I, that that pot that I made that I made uh, yesterday took me less than an hour to make. Okay, seriously, took me less than an hour to make in my shed. All right, so, you know, I don't want to muck around sort of cutting bits out of it. You're not always going to get it spot on and all the rest of it. So I'd sooner just do it the method that I've personally just taught myself, literally just taught myself yesterday. I've made a few in the past where I've actually cut the sections out to slip them in and all the rest of it. But I don't think they've come out as good as this one that I've made now. Now, once you've, now once you've, um, you've cut it to your size that you want, taking a knife now in this case I'm going to use this I'm going to use the Mora knife all right and what we're going to do now we're going to just tidy up the birch bark and you know like when you um when you when you're out in the woods or whatever and you want to make a fire you find yourself a bit of birch bark and the one thing you do is you start scraping you start scraping the white part the outer skin of the birch bark to obviously create enough of that to, to strike a ferro rod onto it. But what we're going to do is we're literally going to scrape off the whole thing. Now the good thing about it is earlier on when I was waiting um, all the bits of um, all the bits of birch bark that I had I scraped all the uh, shavings off and I put them into a bag so they're not going to go to waste I can put them in my uh, put them in this little resealable bag and then I can use them for fire lighting at a later date so it doesn't really matter too much what I tend to use is the sort of the curve of the blade there the D part of the blade the D curve and literally just nice and easy you haven't got to dig into the bark and just slowly run your uh, your knife over it removing the silver part and then taking exposing down to the to the next level of the bark as it were which I've done or what it's called I'll call it the second layer that will do Okay, so now once I've scraped all that, um, as much of that bark off as I can, keeping it all nice and tidy, what I'll do is I'll get a piece of abra in it. Something like that. This is 240 grain, this one. Okay, it doesn't really matter too much, but I don't want to tear it with a, with a, with a heavier grain. All I'm going to do is just gently rub it and just get all the finer curls off the um, birch bark off the bark. So you've got a nice smooth surface to work with. Now, this bit isn't spot on. I'm not going to use this as a mean, as a, as a water container or anything like that. Because if you look closely on inspection, there are a couple, there's one, two, three sort of tiny little holes in it. But I'm still obviously going to use that just for the demonstration purposes. Because obviously I'm working with what I've got. If you're lucky enough to live in sort of northern climes of the world, um, you know, where your birch bark is obviously better better than it is here in, in, in the UK then obviously you'll have some thicker stuff but once we've once we sort of uh, we're kind of happy with that on one side what I'll do is I'm going to turn it over the inside and I'm just going to give that a gentle scrape as well nothing too nothing too special I'm not going to go too mad you can even just use the abronet on its own I've got a slight bit of I've just scored out a tiny bit of bark there and it's obviously developed to hold out, but hopefully what I'm hope what I'm gonna hope is when I start to make it is that when I fold it over, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose a bit of that anyway when it flaps over on itself. Alright. I'll just give that a little bit of a rub down. Okay, 
will do. Now, obviously at the moment you can see it's quite stiff. You know, if we if we just use this bit, you know, it's obviously quite stiff. If I bend it too much, too aggressively, it's going to snap it. Okay, you know, it will snap. Using this piece as an example. Okay, so what we're going to do now? Okay, I'm going to get a jug. I'm going to go and heat up the kettle, put some um, hot water into it, and then we'll drop that into a jug. Right, so I've robbed my wife's um, favourite Pyrex out the uh, out the drawer, um, and then what I'm going to do is nice and slow, at least try and easy bend that into the jug without it splitting too much, and then feed it in there. And what that does, it just makes it so much more pliable. All right. So I've put that in there and I'll top that up with some more water now. Right, and as you can see, the difference already, how much more pliable it makes it. I'm just going to put that bit in the bottom because it missed it missed the hot the uh, water. It's not hot hot, it's just it's obviously just a little bit hotter than I didn't let the kettle go to a boil. I've literally just submerged it enough and as you can see now it's a bit more pliable for when you want to, you know, shape it to you know to whatever it is you're gonna you're gonna make with it okay now what i do is obviously i might i try and try and obviously gauge an idea from the length of the birch to obviously the disc that i'm going to use on the base all right now what i'm gonna do is i'll lay that out put that jug of water to one side got my piece of birch bark laid out flat and then what i'm going to do just for fancy i'm going to try and keep the outer outer of the bark uh, actually, I'm going to do it the other way, where I've got the inside, where I've got the inside on the outside. Okay, if that makes sense. All right. Now, because of the oils and everything that's in the bark, um, you know they're obviously quite good to use for 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 containing food in and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> but what we're going to do now? Okay, so we've got our uh, we've got our cylinder. So what I'm going to uh, now what I've done is I've folded it over. I'll get my base and I'm going to just place my base inside there to gauge an idea on the actual on the actual diameter that I'm working with. I'll probably put that on there. They've both got tight, ever so slight splits on them. Those cut those outside bits. So I just need to be a little bit careful. Obviously, when I start to uh, when I start handling it too much. Okay, this is probably a fumbly bit that you do. Okay, all right, that's probably not, that's not too bad like that, that's quite snug there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is trying to keep my, trying to keep it as best I can there. All right, I've still got enough, if I quickly poke the bottom of it, poke the lid out, I've still got enough overhang on the inside there to stitch it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go about a finger finger in from the edge and that's where my sew line is going to be okay like on this one for example i mean i've obviously gone a bit less there but that's about what you want to be looking at okay um because i have just under my thumb there there is a slight split in it so obviously i don't want to create it even more so if i go about a, about a finger depth in all right i should be okay so now what i'll do in, in all that all that talking worry about whether or not that's moved what I'll do is I'll just place that back on there again. Uh, and that looks quite okay how it is there, like so. All right. All right. Okay. Now, what we're going to need to do now, again, is poke it out the bottom. Now, when I did it yesterday, what I've done was, for the first hole... I actually used the hole punch. I used to use the, I used the hole punch on the first hole, and then on the rest of them, I used the awl off the knife. Okay, um, you can't quite see it there, but where, what happened was I, the, the hole was slightly bigger, so I so I actually threaded that through a number of times, keeping it nice and tidy. Okay, before I fed it through on the others with the awl that I made. All right, I've done all this all by the way. All right, so what I'm going to do now is about, as I say, we said about an, about a finger, little finger, doesn't really matter too much, or an index finger from the edge, and I'm just going to go up slightly and then puncture that first hole. Oh. Oh. I don't know 
if that's gone through. I think it has. Without sort of ripping all the birch bark apart. Okay, and there's my first hole. If I get one of my needles out, well, actually you can use the awl, it doesn't really matter. If we get the awl now and just poke it in there, you can see that that's come through all right. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take one of our needles, okay, and we're going to thread, um, thread the... Uh... Now I've got a tub of this raffia, yeah. It normally starts out at a thick end and then goes down to a thinner end. Um, it's actually, it's not a bad... Uh, sort of material to sort of play around with if you're if you're having a go with um, sort of doing a bit of um, sort of mucking around learning how to um, do cordage okay so what we're doing now we take that needle out okay because it's got a nice it's got a nice big eyelet no mucking around okay and you can poke that straight in there all right obviously the birch the birch uh, tube is here. I mean, we've already developed our, we've already put our, uh, our fast holes in it, so we ain't got to worry too much about the actual um, about the diameter of it. Just line them up, line those two holes up. All right, and then just poke your poke your uh, your needle through. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do first of all. Is I'll leave it a little bit stray out of there and I'll I'll sew it a couple of times just just through the bottom there all right get it quite tight just use my teeth there I'll go through and I'll go through once more it's probably just the fiddly bit is getting you started I think I might pull one of the little threads through, but it doesn't matter at this at this point. Okay, and then get that nice and tidy. All right. Now, once you've done your first hole, you're quite you're quite established now. What I would do is I'd, I'd take the disc again, see what the disc is like in there. I think once you've sewed it, it actually pulls it in just a tiny bit more, gives it even a nicer a nicer kind of fit. All right, now what we're going to do now, we're going to sew up the side of it. All right, so same again, using the old Mark 1 eyeball. Now, as you can see there, it started to split slightly, but I'm not worried about that too much. I think once I start stitching it, that'll come into place. And then when we're finished, we can actually just cut those bits off just to make it, just to make it a bit more, um, just a bit more, uh, more aesthetically um, appealing, as it were. All right. Okay, so now once we've done that, okay, we take our rule now and sort of about maybe like a little finger, okay, and in, in line with the other hole, we're just going to push all the way through. Do it gently because obviously you don't want to puncture a hole in your finger. Give it a little turn and taking hold of your needle, you can poke that into the hole. And pull it through. Oh, I'll see what I've done wrong. <laughs> see what I've done so. What I've done wrong is I've I've pulled it all the way through. So what I've done is I've sewed it back in there and then taken it onto the next one, which I shouldn't have done. That was uh, very silly of me. Now what happens is well, what I will say is that I learned yesterday as well is if you find it a bit of a struggle trying to get your needle into the actual container. All right, what you can do is the eyelet of the needle, poke that into your holes that you've just made, all right, then look in from the inside, and then thread your raffia that way. Just poke it in there like so, pull it through, and then what starts to happen is your raffia then comes through. All right. All right. Okay, literally what I've done was I literally just cut the stray bit of um, raffia that was there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to work our way along. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch in the uh, the last lot of holes with the awl. So I haven't got to bother keep picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. Okay, so I've just put another one there. 
just go gently because I can feel my finger behind it but obviously just you know use your common sense with it right now this one is going to take me right up to right up to the line where the crease is where it's split so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one just just one side of the crease where it's split and then I'll put one again the other side All right, so you can see there it might not be as quite as as beautiful to look at but at the end of the day you've you've, you've got to keep you obviously that crease is the um, split that's developed on the bark there you obviously need to take that into uh, into consideration as well and then my last one along the side I'm just going to apply that now nice and gentle all right so now we've got our, our holes um, drilled placed old right the way up the side okay and now we can and now we, we can continue all right so it is a bit of um, sort of mucking around in a way sort of placing it on the needle and all the rest of it but you know hey ho if, you know there's obviously other ways of doing it better than what I'm showing you all right but if the needle won't go through I say all you've got to do is just poke the, poke the other end of the needle through all right, pull your pull your raffia through. Take the needle out, and then like so. Now, what you can do, okay, which really what I'll do first is before I before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the um, sorry to complicate things maybe ever so slightly but it doesn't matter too much but how i've sort of done it like this one running up like so what you can do is either you can either do one right where was we then because it all went a bit peaked on oh, my, my the camera ran out of battery <laughs> right okay so i'm going to run the stitch back through again all right so what i'm going to do is with the needle push it back through the opposite hole All right, and then what I'll do is I'll just look to see obviously where the eyelet of the needle is. Place the raffia back through the hole. Let me just twist it up a bit. Let you run it back through there and then just pull it. Oh, it's snaked on the inside it means that I didn't get all the um, I didn't get all the raffia through now if you don't get all the raffia through all that happens is is that it gathers on the one side which is you know you don't really want to do that because you want to try and keep it tidy all right let's try again try and twist it up if you can or if it comes to it, just you know, cut it off at the end. Okay, then once that's through, put it through nice. Go back through the hole second time pull your raffia through and then take the needle out all right okay and then all you do now is just repeat the process Right, folks. So I had a slight bit of an issue with the um, with the raffia. Um, the one that I used, yes, that was a lot better. But the one that I've got in that pot is really crap. So what I've done is I've changed to the smaller needle, so it's enough for me to be able to sew it. And because of that, what I've done is I've literally I can I can actually get the needle inside the pot without having to take out 
without having to take the needle off the thread and that's lucky for me really because otherwise I'll be, it's a lot of a lot of um, mucking around trying to uh, you know thread it it seriously isn't as bad doing it this way if you've got a needle that's small enough to go into the diameter of your container no, I just need to line up that one Where's the split? Where's the uh, hole? There we go. So I can poke that one back through there. Okay. I mean, all the little stray bits of raffia, we can sort them out at the end. The main bit right now is getting the, the actual main bit of the, the container all threaded up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually just take off that off cut there, which it just keeps it a bit more tidier. And as you can see, the bit, the, as I say, the raffia that I've used today isn't as good as the one that I used yesterday but no worries we're still getting around we'll still get around it right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold that I'm going to bring that over the top there well actually I won't because the base is going to go on there okay so I'm going to just pass it back through the inside of that hole there And then I'm just going to run it through that hole there. Okay. And I'm going to repeat the process again. See, the more times you can thread it, obviously, you can hide some of the uh, hide some of the uh, the crappy bits, as it were. Um, what I can do now at this stage obviously because I've got say right now I'm going to use this as my, as my bottom half okay so that's going to sit in there like so when I, once I glue it in and everything else now what I could do is just to make it a little bit more fancy like this one what I can do is obviously continue it now and then just puncture a series of holes all the way around there and then we can use that as, as kind of a way of, of keeping it nice and tidy and making it a little bit more decorative. What I did what I, when I was mucking around earlier with my bits of um, with the bits of power, uh, the bits of birch bark that I was mucking around with, what I could do almost is is something like where I where I create a rim here. Oh wow, and that's just touching. That's literally just touching. And I could do that, I could put that on there just to give it a little bit more, uh, just to give it a, a tiny bit more strength. And then obviously I could I could sew around that if I so wanted to. Right, and then that will sort of prevent that crack from coming out as well. So I might do that, that would be a little bit adventurous I think. Now understand folks here, right, I haven't been watching any videos on it or nothing, I've literally just been doing it myself. So what I've done there with that rim, I've literally punctured a hole with the awl in one end. I'm going to do the same again the other. Obviously taking it up a little bit from the uh, from the actual end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sew that together to create my rim that will go on top of the actual, which will go on top of the beaker. So we'll see. All right, so let's see how it goes then. I've literally um, doubled up a piece of raffia on a, on a separate needle because the other one's still threaded into the actual pot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a tiny, do a small overhand knot in the uh, trailing end of the uh, of the cold of the cold of the raffia. I'll cut the excess off. 
Right, I'm going in, let's see how it goes. So we're going to go in from the bottom. Bring that in over the top. Pass it through the hole. Right, folks, the reason why I'm not demoing this, I'm literally just, you know, I'm literally just, I'm learning live as it were myself. All right, so this is what makes it all fun. Let's pull that knot back a bit. Uh, right, I think what I'll do is I will also put one that side, getting it through the hole. So it's all part of it, folks, all part of the learning curve, isn't it? You know, I'm showing you my method of how I learned literally yesterday playing around with it, and it's sort of, you know, it isn't rocket science really, or maybe it is, but um, you know, when you've got the easy, when you've got a few gadgets to, to obviously help you out. Okay, should we pass one more? For, I'll tell you what, I'll go around once more. And once more again. Let's cut off the excess of raffia there. Well, there it is. That's the rim. Now, the acid test is putting it back on top because obviously we've had to lose a tiny bit of. Uh, what I'm going to do is the seam. Actually, I'm going to put the seam right over the top where I'm sewing. So that's probably a little bit of fiddling going. A little bit of fiddling from me right now. So just bear with us, folks, while I. Uh, Oh no, it's oh, as it's split, it's slightly split at the top on my rim. I'll still keep going and see if I've got enough to kind of feed that in there. Oh, it's caught on the actual oh, it's split there. Well, I mean, I'll take those little excess bits off there. Now it ain't too bad. I mean, it's not, you know, but that's not too bad. Would you throw that away? No, because it's my first attempt. So I'd keep that one of using, of putting the rim on it. We've got that little split there on the bark, but I'm not. I'm still not. Um, I'm still not fussed by it. Let's see if that lid will fit on there. And even when it's finished, you know, that lid on there would go all right, wouldn't it? Okay. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now then is while that that rim's on there now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a series of holes all the way around, spaced all the way around that rim. And then that's basically going to be, that's going to be held in place by some more raffia. All right. Okay, so as you can see now, I've put my, um, my holes all the way around where I'm going to sew through. Unfortunately, because there's still a split there in the canister, I've had to put one there and then I've had to bring one stitch lower down. Okay, and then put, I'll put two stitches there, but obviously I'm going to probably use the top one to continue it all the way around. All right, so I mean, if we can see there, that's where the, we've got a slight sort of bit there on the, on the top where it's gone. And then we've got a slight bit here, which I could probably take that excess off, actually. That probably won't matter too much. All right, so we'll see how we get on. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the needle on the inside so that the lashing goes over the top of the 
of the little reinforcement rim as it were and then pull it back through trying to keep that raffia tidy and reasonably tight okay same again inside you're sort of going from inside to out right so there's our it's starting to form we're getting up to the split now so I need to be a little bit gentle when I get to there I suppose pull the, pull the uh, raffia through and go and keep it nice and tidy right what I'm, is, what I'm going to do now is we're going to have to we're running out of raffia so what I'm going to have to do, or the thread, whatever it is that you're using, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to show you how to join on another bit. Well, that ain't come out too sad. That's where the crack is. And it ain't come out too sad, I suppose. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass it through the hole there. Actually, we might get round. We might be lucky to get round. I'm hoping we are. Let's poke that into the hole there. We might be lucky. Might be lucky, folks, you know. Let's hope. Okay. And then we can finish off on that hole there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that all the way through. Now, at this stage, you know you could go either way with it you could either i could what i probably will do i think just for this one for this video otherwise it'll be just going on forever but i think what i'll do is i'm just going to re-thread the needle and i'm going to stop it where the seam starts there and then that'll be it that'll be it for that i think um if you really wanted to you could maybe use the old cross thread and go back over around the other way it depends how fancy you want to get with it really a little bit maybe a little bit like this one you know but again, that's maybe down to you if you're if you you know if you're playing around with it, and whether or not this video has uh, uh, will educate you some. Well, it's certainly educating me, and I'm I'm learning as I'm as I'm showing you people. Right, I've taken that needle out there. I feel what I do is take that straight bit of raffia off. Well, blimey, that was a bit of a fight, wasn't it? I mean, that was no way as... <laughs> I made that one yesterday. <laughs> that was so much easier, believe me. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to put on the bottom. So we're going to poke that end out. Okay, we get our, our, um, our base that's going to go on the bottom. Take your uh, glue, your wood glue. Actually, I've got a stray bit of uh, raffia in there. I just want to cut that out. Right, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to just put some glue around the outside. You've only got to sort of dab it, you ain't got to put too much on. I'll probably need a new, need a new bottle of glue actually. That's what you get leaving it in your shed for so long. Okay, so we've put the glue on. Right here. And literally just dab it all the way around using your finger. And obviously, if you've got a nice snug fit on the bottom of your pot, it's going to, uh, it will stick it itself anyway over time. So it's not, um, you know, you ain't got to go too mad with it. Okay, so then once we've done that, obviously trying to keep your fingers off of everything getting covered in glue. And you just insert that into your base. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, uh, I want something just to push it down with, oh, something like that. I probably could have done with using the other side, it makes it look a bit tidier. So there we go, I'll let that, uh, I'll let that dry off a little. 
and in the meantime we now need to make our, our top now um, with the top I'm going to quickly do a, a blue Peter version of this because time's getting on and I've got to be somewhere else shortly okay so what I've done was I um, to make the base I use the same bit to make the base as I do the top then cut it out um, cut it out to the size that you want for your cap to go on then work out what you're going to use in regards to making a handle I could maybe fold over a little bit of birch on this one and apply that um, but in the meantime what I did use was a bit of a garden twine um, 6 mil um, drill bit I used to drill the hole then what I've done was I've got a dowel a 6 mil dowel sharpened it sort of flat flat sharpened it either side okay enough for me to then push the rope through all right and then and then tap gently tap it with a mallet all the way through so that the rope the the cordage has become quite snug there's a little bit sticking out sticking out there through the other side as you can see but that's nothing to worry about okay tidy it up even put a slight bevel around the inside edge of it so it slips easy onto your pot and then once you've done then once you're quite happy with that that then goes on there like so and then there we have it there's our kind of uh, there's our finished pot so yeah there it is okay I might want to tidy that up a bit or I might just leave it um, I think I might just leave it I don't want to ruin this one too much because of the slight splits are in the side there all right but there it is I'm not going to use it to put water in but it kind of is another container if you like to go with go with the other one that I've made okay all right folk you don't be there it is that's it you know every day is a learning day every second's a learning second I think as far as I'm concerned and so there it is that's um that's my attempt at showing you people how to make one of these birch pots all right as I say the biggest problem that we have in the UK I think is the quality of the birch bark that we actually can get but if you're lucky enough to find some fallen trees that have gone down and been down for a little while normally you can find that you can um, if the wood's gone on the inside, you can normally cut the sheet um, open with your knife or an axe and then peel it off, bring it home, let it dry, and then obviously you can then go to work on it and play around with it, making, making um, you know, birch park containers. I mean, this is no good now. I'll basically just use this to burn. I've got another sheet here, which I might be able to rescue. But as you can see, there's slight splits in it and everything else. It's not, it's not too bad here. But I'd probably have to make something a bit smaller, all right? But so be it. It's all part of the fun and all part of the learning process. All right, so I do hope you like that video. Um, you know, it's, it's probably the blind teaching the blind, I think, with, you know. But um, I hope that might give you another idea for a little project you want to have a go of. All right, and also, again, just let me know your comments, all right? So thanks for watching. All right, please take care. There's Katie signing out, and I'll see you on the flip side. Stay safe, folks. Love you all. Laters.